Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the HES Consortium Board of Directors, I would like to welcome you to our 2024 Best Practices Showcase to celebrate technology, innovation, for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Julianis Vasquez, and I will be presenting the speaker for the current session of this room. Before we begin, uh, we request for your support with the following. Please change your mobile phone to silent mode to have your full attention and avoid interruptions. This session is being recorded. This presentation will be in English. And finally, our staff uh, will pass a QR code to all the participants to complete your electronic evaluation for this session before you leave the room. You can also find the QR code on your name badge for your feedback and recommendation. Please uh, fill out the form. Now we are ready to start. This current session is under the track online learning. The title of the presentation is Digital Entrepreneurship from Puerto Rico to the World. Please welcome our speaker, Leticia Pagan, from Universidad Politécnica de Puerto Rico. Good evening, almost afternoon or morning here. We don't have uh, these differences in time. Culturally, we have the day at all. So, yeah? Good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. <laughs> So I'm um, Dr. Leticia Pagan. I teach at the Polytechnic University of Puerto Rico uh, for the past 20 years. I've been teaching in other universities in Puerto Rico as well as in Massachusetts. <coughs> I lived there for a while, nine, nine years. Uh, since I came to the Polytechnic, I teach in the Master of Business Administration program. We have management programs. Uh, for engineering management and environmental management. So I teach engineers, environmentalists, and management professionals. Since I came here, I was assigned to teach a course to develop entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship for entrepreneurs that not need to be from a business background. My students, always show that this is a concern because this is the last class of the master program. So they need to pass the class so they get the degree. But at the same time, most of the time I've been working with students that are involved in technology in IT. So throughout these 20 past years, the development of technology has been increasing and changing the way people do business. So throughout these 20 out of 40 years of experience teaching in technology, I've been learning how to work <coughs> in the development of entrepreneurship initiative, but while everything is changing. Because in the beginning we call this um, a business, and then we move to e-commerce, and then we move to mobile commerce, and we have e-payments, and everything is going to be without the e, because everything is technology and digital. That's why the concept of digital entrepreneurship came. It's a recent term. Previously, they used to call this technology entrepreneurship. I also, in 12, 14 presented in this same Congress a presentation talking about mobile commerce. Mobile commerce has been a big change since the past 10 years. So we have everything moving around because the devices are moving around. In, in my presentation, I will be talking about different <coughs> environments we find out now in the business arena. So we have a new type of initiative towards creating a new business, and also we would have different environments to work businesses. In terms of the global perspective of my presentation, what I would like to tell this community is that we do not have a space geographically where we build a business. We can build it in the cloud, and we can serve different communities 
around the world. Doesn't need to be a big city, maybe it can be a village. But the entrepreneurial perspective that any of my students would have, let's say those who are from environmental, the master in environmental management, they develop design of a, an environment, a, 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 a home that doesn't need to have electricity from any organization or water. They design a house with all these technologies for their customers so they would have a, an environmental nice house, I would say. In the case of those who are in business, they are more familiar with doing business in, in, in the web or on the cloud. But those who are from engineering, depend on the type of engineering that they are studying, they would prepare different kind of businesses that focus on the ideas to generate any kind of income, revenues. Most of them, those who work from engineering, they build things, they have ideas. Those who are in the area of industrial engineering, they also help companies to, pro to, re to, to develop processes that will help in the productivity and the quality of the business. In the case of uh, <coughs> geography, I would say we in Puerto Rico think that we have uh, limitations in terms of where we are located. But we are located in any place in the world when we are talking about the internet. You don't need to be in any place to do businesses or develop in, in, an entrepreneurship initiative. If you look at the biggest company in e-commerce in, in China, which is, uh, what is the big, biggest company in China? E-commerce, sorry, Alibaba. Alibaba. Okay. So we find that this uh, entrepreneur, he developed a company to help leaders, business people in different places around, around his country, and those people were able to develop small businesses in a little island, in a little village, or in a big community. So when, when this uh, English prof teacher, because he was an English, English teacher, developed this company, no one would think that it would be the biggest company in the world. So he worked step by step to build that company that is today, okay? So when we look at this young woman, young, young man, who is, um, who tried many times to get into the Harvard Business School, um, was in I, more than 10. So, and then being a biggest business entrepreneur, he doesn't, no coding, he doesn't know how to do coding, but he has an entrepreneurship vision toward the future. For, in, me, in my students' case, I would like them to see that idea and put that idea in a business perspective using the new technologies that they are finding new now. But in my case, when I began in technology four years ago, teaching courses in coding and basic, well, this was already there. We have phones, we have a messages like the chat, chat that you have, but we were professors. So we were people who were able to be connected with computers. In 1980, I was able to commune communicate with universities around the world using the internet. But it was another arena. Now we are in a pure business arena where people can sell ideas through the internet. The product doesn't have to be physical. You can sell anything. Also, 
with sound, music, content, and products. I would think in the case of e-commerce or retail that you need to try to make this smaller product so you can sell to everybody around the world and use the less cost of transportation because now we have, again, the transportation that they used to have in the 1900s. So in, in, in my class, we will show the students what would be to be in a digital entrepreneur achieve a adventure because this would be an adventure. Digital entrepreneurship is defined as a when when people are creating new ventures and transforming existing businesses in developing novel, novel digital technologies and novel usage of such technology. So that's the idea of Jack, the Chinese entrepreneur that I was telling. It was his idea of creating businesses for a small business. And he was able to provide them everything, including the merchandise, but also the technology to payments. A payments have been used in China for a long time. And also, he was able to bring this business people the tools that are needed to develop software and software programs. And in addition, when now when we try to do this key money, is when he find problems. Because money, you know, create money electronically is something that needs to do with policies and politics. So, so there was a little issue in terms of when he tried to develop the payment system, I guess the name of the companies, and he was not able to put it on the stock exchange. And now we are looking forward to that entrepreneurship to invest. In the case of uh, these two ventures, it's not only to make a new venture, it's to use the technology in a different way, okay? Which is something that I keep telling my students because the economy resources that we have are other factors that are uh, impacted, affected the way we do business. So we have new technology, we have new ways of doing management, which is difficult when you have provide services and you have uh, human resources that are not near you. They are remote. You have to supervise people when they are at home, and you have to confide in them because they may not be working. They may be taking care of some relative, uh, or maybe they will do their work in different time frame that the one the company, the traditional company works. So you have to show these um, employees that you confide in them and that they will do their job. It's not to work a hour, it is to complete the job. And this is from professional to other kind of black, by, um, blue collar employees. You don't, you don't have any more that time frame of eight hours. You just have the people working at home. Most of the people working at home, at home, but this was more quickly a change that we have more quickly because of the pandemic. Because people needed to be at home, but they needed to work. And uh, now people embrace technology from home, and then people initiate businesses from home so they would develop their money to cover their expenses through the internet. It was more innovation during the pandemic uh, terms we had than before. So innovation is a word that goes together with digital entrepreneurship. Other things that are impacting this environment 
are the schools, universities, <coughs> how they are teaching the people, the students, to work in this environment. Some countries have done a great part in developing the skills in their students since they were young. For example, there was a, a program at Harvard University where they, they sold computers, laptops, computers, plastic, $100 for students in Brazil, for students in India, and other countries that were developing. But now those are the leaders in India, for example. Those students that 20 years ago, 18 years ago, took these plastic laptop computers in first grade, now they are the dominant people who are developing software. And the companies around the world, they call them, they come for it in one week, and they finish a project in software. So these are uh, different things that have, have been happening throughout these last 20 years are very important for developing a mentality Innovate, innovative mentality in each one of the children that go to the first grade. So countries need to see the examples of their neighbors and do the same. So we develop this economy that provides us the advantage and the progress, progress in the future. So it's not only to participate in a social network. So these tools that we have inside the web would help us to develop a, a great, a, a, a big, and expanding community and sustain our community, community of business. So in Puerto Rico, we need that. So in my presentation, of 2014, I show how Puerto Rico was very advanced in terms of technology, and also how Puerto Rico was compared to other countries, big countries. But happened the hurricane, so we need to go back and check how these technologies have been improved, so we can have the same technological advantage that we used to have in the past. It's, it's about using the resources we have, economic resources, so we get back to be on the top of the uh, IT technology system. We can bring companies, but we can do it in, inside in Puerto Rico. That's mm, the topic of education and talent acquisition. Now it's not a limitation not having and we want to develop a website, develop software in Puerto Rico. You can hire resources from other countries and make them work here. Or people from here can work remotely for other countries. That's why it's from here to there, from there to here. Depending on the industry, industries, you will have more advantages to develop this kind of innovation. It is not for all the industry. Mostly industries that are service, industries that are intangible goods that can serve <coughs> to, the, to the web. That's why the music, the this new type of music, new for me, uh, is being taking all the money around the world in concerts and it's coming back to Puerto Rico. But it's because you don't have the limit of transportation because instantly your content in music will come right to Puerto Rico. And if the, the artist decides to reside in Puerto Rico, then all this money will come here and have the economy with the taxes they pay. But it is a decision of the singer or actor or whatever it is to come back to Puerto Rico and present this money to this economy and use it to invest in anything else. But the problem also what that we have today with the 
entrepreneurs is that they want the money right away. So they develop a company and they sell up and they keep the cash. But the economy doesn't work like that. If you keep the cash, what happens is that there is no development. The money is not running, so your money has less value. That's why the interest went down when we have that problem. The money is in the bank, you don't have interest, gains, and then the interest payment move further. They are greater. You pay more for the use of, of money, and you have your money in the bank and you don't gain anything. I remember when I was at college, getting out of college, 21, 22 years, and I used to have a savings account that paid 12%, first bank. It was a, a co-op, it was a savings and loan, first bank, it was not a bank, but they paid me 12%. So it was possible for women like me to reach retirement and have $100,000 in the bank because this simple law of interest will get you to have 100, 200, depends on what you put on, on savings. Now it is difficult. Those of you who are younger, you are not going to be able to do that. If you work for someone, but if you get into an entrepreneurship adventure, then you will get money to be able to retire sometime. The other five factors that impact these companies are the type of consumers and their behaviors. Today, consumers are, they, they want to pay for something that they haven't seen or tried. They pay in advance. They say, well, they will return me the money. But then you have to go to the post office. And then you have to deal with the package loss. And then you will have the return. So most of these companies that are retailing companies, they are losing money because of the returns. So you have to prepare a very clear and transparent policy so you will do business and the customer will keep with you. You need to have the same customer coming back. If not, that's why you see that company changes their names and are the same people because they lost the consumer because they were not good in providing the services of returning all payments, all the transportation, all the product never came. And also the fraud, which is another story, but security on the internet. So value change, which is where the product comes, and supply change are important. This is the digital environment app. You can add the economic resources, the technology, the management, the talent acquisition, education and industry, and all the related factors, and then you will have that environment. The environment that will provide you an innovative, innovative possibility to generate profit. And if, if you don't generate profit, and your company is a known for profit company, you will provide more services to other people. Some of my students have done websites for their uh, karate classes or their baseball teams of the kids or churches. So it doesn't have to be business at all. It can be services too. And it, it is easier to provide services to people that are far from you when you use the technology. And to find if these people will have the technology available through all their phones that are free. In Puerto Rico, people receive phones from the government and they can add the internet in there. They can make, receive services from the government throughout the platform. That's why phones are very important, the intelligent phones, because they have been making easier to people that doesn't have many resources to get into that world, the environment that we talked. People also can set 
ideas content, content throughout the web, not only music. Content is another <coughs> important thing that you just give, con give, um, give people ideas or provide answers to questions that are on the internet. That's what you see now in a artificial intelligence. They just took all the information and put it together. They develop um, some kind of, how do you say? It is a, 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 a model that will put out all, all the information from the web and give it to you the answer immediately. They, they do not, they want, they, the information is not from these people who are in AI, but that's why we have, we are having different problems in terms of lawsuits about, around these other companies. So in the future we will see what is going to happen with that. It's very adventurous to say that that will be the end of everything. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Okay, maybe it doesn't go anywhere. It's like the Tomacuchis, this company that you, people used to have in the 20s. You, have a, you need a pet, you buy a Tomacuchi. But they die if you don't take care of them. <coughs> so this is the environment that I show my students so they can develop these ventures. I, we have changes, so um, we have changes because rural, Places are different from cities and big cities, and people are developing businesses for everyone. You can develop a business venture for your community, but you cannot also think big and make a big company like the music of uh, Baton, for example. Demography. People have. People have different ages, we have people from different socioeconomic economic groups. We have changes in the woman as a, the owner of the resources of that home and women that are going up into the business ladder to get the big positions and taking big amount of work. And it's true that women are the ones who are bigger, worth money, capital resources, in this economy that we have today. They buy homes, they buy cars, they pay for the kids' uh, schools and everything, but they have reached those places. In here, in Puerto Rico, we don't see a lot of women doing organizations, associations, or everything, because we, we have in the past, we have had women taking care of everything. But in other places, they need to get into an association so, so they enter in the in an innovative entrepreneurship arena. That's why you see a lot of women organizations in the United States, because they need to get this position so they get into that kind of profession, maybe engineering, maybe law, etc. Tendencias, trends, generational trends. The example that I gave you, we used to check the thing. I used to buy cosmetics through a club. We used to have a club, a music club, Columbia Records, something like that. So we used to pay for the, for this acetate, this, and we pay, and they will come in monthly but you were paying when you get them in the post office. You never send money previously to have the music or the cosmetic. You just buy the, the what's that kind of a club, and then when the product came, you pay COD. Cash on delivery. But this generation think that you can pay and maybe something happened, but maybe you lost your money. This is one change that had happened in this generation trend. People send their money, and it doesn't happen, then they claim. But sometimes you don't get back anything. That's why a lot of fraud happens. 
the people of my age, we <coughs> are trying to find the way we have the services we need when we get older. I'm 60. So if you get to live 90 years, which is going to be possible because of the innovative of the sciences, you have to be concerned that you need to have all this money for the future. So we need to purchase services of people. We, I need like kind of an assistant secretary or something to deal with my invoices, my payments, my, how do they say, the utilities, invoices. So we need people. This is one idea. Please do it at 10%. You can develop this kind of business and help people to do, to purchase their medicines, to bring them to their homes, to clean their houses. If you don't want to clean, you can hire other people and pay $10 an hour and you, you will have a, a kind of income from that. But there are many things bringing the kids to their house. We used to have a school buses that bring our kids from a private school to their, our house. Now we don't have anybody who wants to do that job. But if you decide to make it like kind of the, a, a road and say, well, we will pick the students in the different co colleges. We, we used to say colleges to private schools in Puerto Rico. So, colegio. So you bring the kids from this school to the other school, but you have the math and you hire the drivers and you buy the trucks. So these are different things. I used to set, to show my students uh, a supermarket that is in, in the north of Massachusetts, Pippa is the name. They used to sell at home. I was selling, I was there in 1995. So it's a long time ago where the people buy milk, bread, things like that, and people in little trucks bring those to their homes. Also, there was supermarket selling. You bring the list and they bring it to your house. Like we have a corner now, but this was 20 years ago. And people was a, a, a venture which was electronically. So let me go to the things that we came to talk about my class. So the students have developed different ideas, and I teach students the difference between the traditional business and the new business, the digital business in where we are at now, which includes e-commerce, mobile commerce. You all know that, because after the pandemic, we learned how to deal with all that phones, making orders, orders, going to the store and pick them out from from the sidewalk. The students decide to an idea. They create an idea and then they make a like kind of a statement of their vision. Their vision of that business. The students after that they make a marketing plan because you need to know who are you going to sell your product or service. They also prepare budget and perform a financial statement for at least five years. So they will know that in the second year they, they will get back all the startup costs that they needed at the beginning and begin to earn money from their services or products. And then the students need to prepare a website. In this course, they not only prepare a website or a software program, which is a database for doing with accounting things, inventories, invoices, etc., or maybe uh, for a small little restaurant or a food truck, things like that. They would do that. And they also prepare a written, a written report I order an order presentation because the course is online, they need to record the presentation and it will take like seven minutes because 
the investor doesn't have many time to hear you. It's not like in the past people went to Costa Brava to you. Somebody, somebody remember that? No. It was a restaurant, a seafood restaurant, very expensive in the group. So people went to a lunch in the past, they talk, <coughs> they bring, and then they decide in a month after if they were going to make the arrangement. But now people doesn't have time. So you have to present your idea at least in one and a half minutes. So they have to like, do a uh, this little talk that if you meet somebody in a network meeting, you will say, what, what are you doing? Well, I do that, 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 that. I will show you how they build this, uh, this little paragraph so they will show people what they are doing in their business. The, the, this course is a course that has only 12 months to finish. So I, I create a course that has four phases. The first one is the more difficult one because you have to create, in, like I said, you have to build an idea. And this was a quote that I took from a, a Forbes magazine in 12, 2012 about uh, Jack Dorsey, those of you who are here know who is Dorsey. So he wrote in a in napkin the idea of this uh, four square, the square thing, the payment system that they, he developed. And the big idea became to be a company. The napkin photo three, something like that, are part of the lobby decoration of the, this company. So when we are built, I'm going to be a, a company, we need to start with a big, big idea. You don't think as small when you are building a business. So you need to think big so you can get and reach there. If you don't reach there, you keep to trying, okay? But it has to be big because if you try to sell just um, a small community, then your will business will not be moved forward unless you replicate that business, like the, how do you say, the Maison business. So I remember going to a meeting where a software oracle was showing us entrepreneurs um, how Maison was building that inventory system to provide the food immediately to each of the customer. And it was like, I would say like 15 to 20 years. And they used to have, I guess like two or three stores. And now you see how they have built this empire because they have been using the right system since the beginning. So this is the, the first part. Then the students make a design, an analysis of what the business is going to do, and when. This can chart the one in the, in the, it shows the time frame of when are you going to be building that business. They have 12 months. My students have 12 months. So what they do is a prototype of their software. But they have the idea of the business. They, like, they can do it through the, the future when they get out of the university with their master's degree. Most of the designs that we do are from people who are in technology, but two people, the investors, the managers, they don't know technology. So we have used an iconic design so that people understand what we are going to do. It's not arrows or circles or triangles. This is a physical design that people will see when they are putting the product in the, in the boxes and sending it in a truck. This is the software we use. Uh, the software is Visio, La Polytechnic University has a consortium with the Microsoft, with Azure Education, and the students are able to take, to receive all this software for free, developer uh, software, so they can develop the business 
through a free software. Some of this software by itself will cost more than five hundred thousand, five hundred dollars, okay, and others thousands. So the phase three students will do the coding if they don't know how to do it. They can find help in doing the coding, but they would create a prototype. This is an example website that I pre-created for the student using, it was open office. It was a free software. But you can do it using Wix or other things of website. And this is in gluten para ti, without, without gluten for you, because they have at home one person that doesn't, does, is allergic to gluten and lactose and everything. So, when they have the website, the prototype, they will pass to the final phase, which is testing the website, and then they launch a project. These three, the deliverables, are the project poster, the oral presentation, and a digital business. And the project poster is because we need to be competitive. At the university, we have, a, we have a design expo where all the master's students present their projects in a poster and they will be shown in online or physical when we used to have the, the facilities before the pandemic. It's been moving more towards online expo. What I have also, which is the last, a, 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 slide. This website is a free one. You can pay for that. If you want things like chat, you to chat with your customer to make reservations and to have a card in here. But at least the students can do the basics of this restaurant with pay soldiers for people who are not able to go to other restaurants. So, this is only 50 minutes. I've been doing this course for 20 years, and you know, I, I would be talking for hours. But I really appreciate that you came to my presentation. I would also like to show your colleagues that it's possible to make a, your business, your entrepreneurship initiative to go from a little place to a big city and urban development. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, because <laughs> sorry, the questions are now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now we're going to have a quick time to the questions. So please raise your hand, uh, say your name and institution uh, for the questions. So anyone has any questions? Um, See. Hello, my name is Katya Miscalante. I'm from Eastern Connecticut State University. Um, I have a couple questions, if yes. that's okay. Um, so there are certainly concerns about digital entrepreneurship and e-commerce in general when it comes to the dimension of, it's more like ethical dimensions. Um, the example of Alibaba, for example, there's concerns on quality, there's concerns on like hyper-consumerism, there's concerns on like how that affects global economies. Um, I was wondering if your course addressed the more like ethical aspects of that. I think a lot of younger consumers especially are becoming more and more aware or at least concerned with where things are coming from in that sense. Is that something that your course touches on? And I was wondering if you could explain why or why not you chose to kind of either include those aspects or exclude them. Well, we, we study ethics in technology since the first course, which is the management information system. Through all of the courses like software engineering, data communications, uh, we do we we used to have a course in oh, artificial intelligence, but in this last project, the students need to integrate the ethical things of what they are selling. So we call that social issues in IT, and they throughout the course were they see cases like the. Uh, uh, the Facebook case of what is called the the analytic 
Analytica, Boston, or Cambridge Analytica, where I live around. So I saw the also in Cambridge, in Massachusetts, not in England. But yes, my, the students since the beginning of the, the, the course, those or engineering or either the other, they will be having their impact, the impact of that technology of a person, and also they need to understand how they do it through managing a company. So they study the two perspectives, the individual, the privacy, and, and on the internet, and how they protect the privacy of those who are in their hands, like employees, or customers, or clients, or patients, etc. Thank you. Um, my other question, you noted earlier in your presentation that um, this course is taken by some non-business majors, which I thought was really interesting. I was wondering um, what kind of challenges have you noticed that people perhaps not specifically trained in business, um, what kind of challenges have those students faced in kind of delving into the world of digital entrepreneurship? Well, mostly when they came to a course that is IT, and those are coming for environmental, let's say, they will find that we are doing coding. We are coding using HTML, which is the, 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 the language that we use that works through the internet. You don't need translator or either of the things. So what I do is that I take one time, if it's present, share the presential, the course. But if not, I, I send them tutorials to work coding step by step. And also I provide tools that are on the internet, like WWC schools, where they can step by step understand all this type of coding. So coding is a, a limitation that they may find, but it's like math. If you are an engineer, you, you understand math at the long run after trying and trying and so on. Okay. So we have to conclude now okay. the questions, and I want to ask <coughs> you one, please, to fill out the questionnaire to evaluate. You remember, is in your tag, in the one that says first day. Also, you here have the program that you can scan it to see the other sessions, and also if you're doing uh, continued education, you can go to the end of the program, and there will be a link when you can fill out to uh, ask for those certificates. And lunch will be uh, in the other side of this building. They told me there's uh, room uh, 101 and 102 that they will give in lunch. So thank you everyone for coming to the seminar. And yes. the board meeting, is it the same place? Uh, I didn't say no, but I can check. Okay. Yeah, but thank you everyone for coming for, uh, to the session. And. Uh,